I'm going to, I'm going to, let me, let me share something with you. We all know this because it's, it's, it's read at so many weddings. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not boast. It's not arrogant. It's not rude. It doesn't insist on its own way. It's not resentful or irritable. It doesn't rejoice in wrongdoing, but it rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes in all things, hopes in all things, endures in all things. You may kiss the bride. (laughs) That's how we hear this all the time, right? We hear that over and over and over again. And then we have it and we're like, ah, that's my favorite scripture because it's the only one I really know. I heard it at somebody's wedding and I, whatever, whatever that one is, I want that read at my wedding because it'll put my wife or husband in a place and make sure they understand you're going to be patient and kind and you're not going to be arrogant and you're not going to, you're not going to insist on your own way. May I, may I give this to you as a litmus test? Let me give this to you as something I did last night as I was laying in bed as I was reading this. I took out love. Now, in some scriptures, it's charity. In some scriptures, it's love. But it's actually neither. The Greek word is agape, which is the pure love of Christ. It is the, it is the self-sacrificing love of God. It is what we have for our children. The minute they're born, something goes wrong with your children, you're immediately like, I'll take it. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. That's agape, where you are willing to do whatever it takes to your own demise because it's the right thing. Now, let's take out agape, charity, love, whatever. Insert your name here. Glenn is patient. No, not, no. uh -uh. Mm -mm. Glenn is kind. Try to be. Glenn does not boast. (laughs) Glenn's not arrogant. Glenn's not rude. Not a chance. Glenn doesn't insist on his own way. Glenn's not resentful or irritable. Glenn doesn't rejoice in wrongdoing. That's the only one that I could say I was pretty good on. I was like, I I got that one. Well, not so much. Sometimes when somebody gets it, I'm like, yes. Yes. But he rejoices with the truth. That one I got. No matter what the truth is, I do rejoice in the truth. Bears all things? Not so much. Believes in all things? Mm -mm -mm. Hopes in all things? Eh, If you believe hope is a step away from despair, I got it. (laughs) And endures all things? Not with grace. I suck on that list. Now, may I ask, if your daughter or your son comes to you and says... I'm dating somebody great. Really? What's her name? Harry. Really? Is Harry patient? Is Harry kind? Is Harry not boast? Is he arrogant? Is he rude? This is a way for you to judge not only yourself, but also anybody who comes around you. Anybody who wants to date your children. Anybody you're supposed to go work for. Anybody you're trying to hire. How about this one? You think I flunked? Donald Trump is patient. Donald Trump is kind. Donald Trump does not boast. Donald Trump is not arrogant. (laughs) Donald Trump is not rude. Donald Trump does not insist on his own way. Mm. Donald Trump is not resentful. Donald Trump is not irritable. Donald Trump does not rejoice in wrongdoing. Donald Trump rejoices with the truth. Donald Trump wow. bears all things, believes in all things, hopes in all things, endures all things. Hmm. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up into politics is because I want you to know that. Oh, let me give you. Let me give you another one. Let me give you another one. Ben Carson is patient. Mm-hmm. Ben Carson is kind. Yep. Ben Carson does not boast. Is not arrogant. Is not rude. He doesn't insist on his own way. He's not resentful or irritable. He doesn't rejoice in wrongdoing. He rejoices with the truth. He bears all things, believes in all things, hopes in all things, endures all things. I think he's pretty good at that. Now, here's the secret. This is the first step. It says in the, in the, in the verses right before, 
You can give away all your stuff. You can sell all your stuff and give it to charity. You can be in nursing homes every day. I mean, it doesn't say nursing homes. This is gospel according to Glenn. You, you can do all of these things. But unless you have this, unless you have charity, unless you have love, unless you have agape, everything you do is worthless. Everything you do is worthless. It won't work. None of it will work. So we have to start looking for this in ourselves looking for this in our leaders, and knowing that's not all that is required. That's just the basic fundamental. Now, here's where it really gets interesting. I would say 40 to 60% of this audience would be like, yeah, yeah, I got it. Got to be kind, got to be love, got to be, you know, not arrogant. I got it, I got it, I got it. Yeah, you're not supposed to be irritable, too. (laughs) (laughs) Most people will say when they hear this, yeah, I got it. I got it. We're supposed to be like that. But they won't take it seriously. This is the cancer in our system. This is the cancer in our society. This is the cancer in our world. We look at this and go, yeah, yeah, I'm doing all that. I'm I'm working on that. And we dismiss it. This is the number one priority. And because it is not the number one priority, we are collapsing as a society. So. I speak to maybe the 40%, 30%, 10 people that are within the sound of my voice that really get this or who want to get this. You want to change the world, you have to do this first. You want to fix our country, you got to fix this first. You want to find the right president, you got to find this first. You don't find these things, it doesn't matter. Anything else we do, it doesn't matter. Don't talk to me if he's a Muslim, if he's a Christian, if he's, if he's a Catholic, is he a Mormon? Does he do, don't talk to me about any of that. Does he have this? If they have this, that's step one. If you have this, that's step one. If your daughter's boyfriend or her girlfriend has these things, that's step one. 